Hi guys, Abs here and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be talking and showing you how you can rank your websites in Google in 2017 and beyond. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about a very important ranking factor. It's a ranking factor that doesn't get discussed much. It affects the way results are selected inside of Google. It affects the way we need to promote our websites. And it's a ranking factor that affects the way we need to work with private blog networks if you work with them. And in this video, I'll be exploring this factor and showing you exactly how we can use this to our advantage to get an even better Google ranking for our web properties. So to start with, guys, I need to speak about the Google Caffeine update, which set the way forward for Google. So when Google released the Caffeine update, which was an entire rewrite to their code, then it provided Google with immense processing power and paved the way forward for many of the changes and and many of the ranking factors that I'm going to be discussing today. And many of the changes that I'm going to be discussing are actually taken from older Google patents that seem to have a much more significant impact today, especially after caffeine was released. These changes are getting stronger and stronger as a ranking factor. They affect how results are selected inside of Google and affect the way our websites can rank. So what is this factor? The factor is the FR factor. So what is the FR factor? It's known as the Google Fresh Factor. It's also known as Fresh Rank, which was a coin, which was a term coined together by Brigsby from Brigsby.com. And in this video, we're going to be exploring three core areas of the Fresh Factor. We're going to be looking at query freshness. We're going to be looking at document freshness, and we're going to be looking at related document freshness. So to start with, guys, I want to speak about the logic behind the Fresh Factor. The goal of the search engine is to provide links to high quality, relevant results based on the search query. Typically, a search engine accomplishes this by matching the terms in a search query to a collection of pre-stored web documents. Web documents that contain the user search terms are known as hits and are returned to the user. So this is a typical search engine, guys. You query the search engine for your search term. The search engine has pre-stored web documents which get queried with your search term. If the web documents match, then they're returned as hits and then they're going to be displayed inside of the search engine itself. So this is an image of Google. But here's the problem, guys. Frequently, web documents that are returned as hits to the user include out of date documents. So this is a big problem. But if the freshness of web documents were reliably known, then the freshness could be used in the ranking of search results to avoid returning out of date web documents in in the top results. Now, when it comes to the HTTP guys, then HTTP supports a last modified since attribute that indicates the day a last modification was made to a corresponding web document. Now, a web document here means a web page or a web post. Um, and this attribute, however, is optional in HTTP and it's not used by all web documents. Additionally, the data indicated in the HTTP last modified since attribute may not be correct or it could be manipulated. This is where document freshness comes into play. Now let's quickly talk about query deserves freshness, QDF, and then we're going to come back and explore document freshness in much more detail. Okay, so query deserves freshness, QDF, essentially means search, search requests or search queries that deserve up-to-date um, up search results. QDF comes into play when a topic sees a sudden rise in mentions, which in like news reports and traffic from like search volume. And to do this, Google monitors three main sources. It monitors blogs and magazines, news portals and search requests. And Amit Signal, who was a former senior vice president and a software engineer at Google, said this. He said the QDF solution revolves around determining whether a topic is hot. If new sites or blog posts are, are actively writing about a topic, the model figures that it is one for which users are more likely to want current information. The model also examines Google's own stream of billions of search queries. So the QDF algorithm was invented by Amit Singhal. He's a former senior vice president um, at Google, and he first talked about this in 2007. And QDF has been a ranking factor ever since. And Amit Singhal describes the following three types of keyword searches most likely to require fresh content. Recent events or hot topics like Occupy Oakland protest, NBA lockout, regularly reoccurring events like NFL scores, dancing with the stars and whatnot you, 
frequent updates like best SLR cameras and Subaru Impreza reviews. And if you think about it guys, it makes total sense. So if somebody is searching for best SLR cameras, they're probably looking for best, or the likelihood of them looking for SLR cameras that, you know, from like seven, eight years ago, um, is very unlikely to them looking for it for the latest update for the latest reviews guys so they're looking for newer and fresher results and these are the kind of queries that tend to get affected by qdf guys okay and this is where query freshness comes into play and here's a quick example of um qdf guys so google search uses a freshness algorithm designed to give you the most up-to-date results not all queries um an example um, when I type World Cup without specifying the year 2018, I still find what I'm looking for. This is query, query deserves freshness in action, guys. Okay, and you can read more about this on this URL here. And towards the end of this presentation, I'm going to actually provide you uh, with a bunch of URLs that you can actually go and do some further re reading as well, should you wish. Okay, so determining a freshness of a query. How do you know, um, um, how can you determine a freshness of a query and how can Google determine freshness of a query? So in a Google's patent, Google themselves suggest that they determine the freshness requirement for a query based on the average age of documents returned for that query in their search results. And this is a image taken from Moz as well, guys. So a good way for you to determine yourself if a, if one of the terms that you're going after um, is a QDF query, um, then what you can do is actually perform a search inside of Google for your query and gauge the average inception age of the pages returned in the results. And if they all appear more than a few years old, then a brand new page, um, then a brand new and fresh page may have a hard time uh, competing against them, guys. Okay, so um, let's get straight into the main parts of QDF and documents, guys. Okay, instead of the actual, uh, sorry, uh, for the fresh factor of documents and not QDF. So Google have already confirmed the QDF factor of a query, rising queries that are hot, people blogging about them and new sites. They, they're also very good at detecting these queries and they actually have tools that they provide us with, such as Google Trends and Google Correlate that provide us with these kind of trending search terms. Okay, and Google don't, we, all, we also know that Google don't want to show stale content in the SERPs that's out of date. It's not what the users are looking for. And as a result, they have various methods to assess the freshness of actual documents without relying on the last modified date and sometimes without even the actual content on that document itself. This is known as related document freshness. Okay, and this very same method that I'm going to be discussing with you and showing you now, guys, enables Google to identify private blog networks. And once they identify these private blog networks, guys, then all the anchor text and all the links that could be pointing to these private blog networks um, would be reset or could be reset, which means you'd have zero authority for these PBNs that you bought them for. So, guys, every document has a freshness score that affects your ranking, and I've put some a stupid equation here that doesn't make sense uh, just to show you maybe it get, gets calculated using various techniques okay and I've personally tested this freshness factor guys on multiple documents and I've always got positive results I've always seen higher rankings and I've always seen more traffic guys so let's explore exactly how Google determines freshness of a document how they do it why they do it and how we can benefit from this ourselves guys so Google uses various methods to determine a document's freshness and many of the examples that I'm going to be sharing with you over the next few slides guys are actually taken from Moz and this is the actual URL here and I use the examples from Moz guys because they had some fairly cool images but if you want to actually read the main and um, the main Google patent itself guys which is called information retrieval based on historical data then you can read it here guys and I'm going to try and actually leave a link to the bottom of this video uh, to these URLs as well <clears throat> so let's have a quick recap so there's three freshness factor areas, guys. Okay, you've got query freshness, you've got document freshness, and you've got related document freshness. Query freshness, not all queries deserve freshness. Google knows what queries deserve freshness by keeping track of search requests, news portals, blogs and magazines, and being able to see a rise in the search volume. 
When it comes to document and related document freshness, guys, then every document has a freshness score. Google doesn't want to show out of date stale content in the SERPs. They have various methods to determine a document's freshness. The document itself can indicate fresh freshness and or documents related to the document could indicate freshness too, guys. So let's explore document and related document freshness, guys. So what determines fresh content? So I'm gonna actually point out the various areas that can determine fresh content as taken from the Google patent and various examples from Moz as well, guys. So you've got the freshness by inception date. This freshness score may boost a piece of content for certain, for certain search queries, but it degrades as the search term, sorry, or it degrades as the content becomes older. You've got change in your content, guys. Search engines can score regularly updated content for freshness differently from content that doesn't change. In this case, the amount of change on your web page plays a role. Okay, so if your website changes, guys, and you have updates, or sorry, on your actual documents, guys, then you could get a more fresher score than other documents that don't actually perform updates onto their, onto their content, guys. Um, but what it says as well, guys, is small changes such as navigation, date, time, tags, etc., won't impact as much as changes to your core document. So the larger your change, um, then the, the more impact impact that it's going to have towards your freshness score and this is a document or an image that I've taken from Moz again guys shows some small changes versus a larger change uh, which is going to get a, f a fresher boost for the larger changes okay the rate of the document change as well guys so content that changes more often is scored differently than content that only changes every few years so for example the home page of the new york times which updates every day and has a high degree of change and for example a document whose content is edited often may be scored differently than a document whose content remains static over a period of time also a document having a relatively large amount of its content updated over time might be scored differently than a document having relative relatively small amounts of its content updated over time. So it's just it's just making notes of exactly the same areas again, but it's also adding other classifications saying that, well, you know what, if there are two documents that have content updated over time, but one document gets more content updated over time to that document, um, then it might be scored differently to the document that got less content changed um, or updated over time. And then documents that get updated more frequently than documents that don't get updated more frequently as well, guys. Okay, so these are freshness factors guys that can affect the freshness of your actual um, documents um, now let's get onto the other stuff as well guys so this is a really cool area and we're going to be speaking about this even more guys new page creation guys so websites that add new pages at a higher rate may earn a higher freshness score than sites that add content less frequently the number of new or unique pages associated with a document over a period of time, the ratio of the number of new or unique pages associated with a document over a period of time versus the total number of pages associated with a document of time. So if your website has got say 100 links guys, and let's say this period of time, Google said it was like say six months, then what they'll do, they'll actually have a look to see how many of them links, or your overall links that you have are from that six months compared to your overall links guys, and they'll be able to assess the freshness based on these um, documents pointing back to your site as well guys. And we're gonna look at this in further detail guys, so I'm not gonna explain it here, but on the next slide, I do actually explain this even further. Um, and here's a quick screenshot for or quick image that I've taken from Moz as well that shows, you know what, more pages can give a more freshness factor. Um, and obviously more pages in, a, in this period of time, in a fresher period of time compared to the ratio of the overall pages uh, can give a fresher freshness signal to Google as well. Okay, the rate of new link growth signals as well, guys. So if a web page sees an increase in its link growth rate, this could indicate a signal of relevance to search engines. And uh, similarly, guys, a downward trend in the number of new links over time could signal that a document is stale. Okay, links from fresh sites pass fresh value. Okay, in the same way as links from authority sites pass authority, links from fresh sites pass fresh value. So links from sites that have a high freshness score themselves can raise the freshness score of the sites they link to. Um, I mean, have a look at press releases, guys. I believe they would have a massive fresh factor due to the amount of pages that they're creating, due to the amount of updates that they're making, guys, um, and whatnot you as well. 
Okay, so links from sites that have a high freshness score themselves can raise the freshness score of the sites they link to. Um, traffic and engagement metrics as well, guys. So if users consistently click a search result further down the listing and they spend much more time engaged with that page than other results, this may mean that the result is more fresh and more relevant and you may get a freshness boost for that as well. Okay, so let's have a look at freshness based on links, guys. This is where we're touching with freshness based on pages as well. So a freshness score may be assigned to a document based on the freshness attribute of each link pointing to it and or based on the times at which each link pointed to that document existed. So this is based on the period of time that we spoke about. So uh, maybe that six month period, guys, you might get a, you might get a freshness boost. Um, but at the same time, guys, of you might all you also get a boost based on the freshness score of the document that actually links back to you as well okay so for example if the number of not okay now this is talking about the previous example that i mentioned earlier on guys okay uh, or the previous um freshness area that i mentioned earlier on so for example if the number of not fresh documents to us of a set of documents containing links to document p is greater than the number of fresh documents of the set of documents containing links to document p then document p can be considered not fresh and a corresponding and a corresponding low freshness score may be assigned to document p so i've actually made an illustration down here to better explain this guy so this is document p um, and you've got links from fresh content you've got three links from fresh content um let's say the period of time is six months um but then over and but you've Overall, guys, having a look at you, all your links together, uh, you've got eight links that are from non-fresh content. So what this means is that you, if you have more links from non-fresh content, um, then it could mean that you get a lower freshness score, guys. Um, and likewise, guys, more newly acquired links than old links can indicate a high freshness score. So here's document P, guys. You've got three links that are, that are old links, but you've got eight links that are new and fresh links, guys. Then this could also indicate a freshness score as well. Okay, deleted links and freshness, guys. Let's see how this plays a role, guys. So you've got document P. Um, now, the um, Google just went and crawled your site, guys, and it's found three links to your website. But when it previously crawled your website, you had eight links, guys. That means you've lost links. So if a site has fewer links than they had before, then they could get a lower freshness score because of that as well, guys. Okay, now, when Google sees your actual document, then it sees changes to the content and it can award you freshness based on, on the changes you made. It looks at new pages and associated content and gives you freshness um, score based on them as well. It looks at the link ratio to time. Obviously, this is based on your new pages and associated content versus your overall links and the link ratio to time. We don't know what that time period is. It could be six months, seven months, or however Google determines that that um, that time period. Um, and it also looks at click-through rate, the traffic and the engagement um, for your document as well, guys. It looks at all of this together and then it gives you a freshness um, score. So here's a quick illustration of how this works very briefly, guys. So Google, it finds your website, guys. Um, it goes ahead and it indexes your website and it puts it into their cache. Um, it then schedules your website for a new crawl or maybe they've landed on your website from another link. But let's forget about that. And let's just say they've scheduled your website for a new crawl, guys. So they've initialized the crawl and before they actually go ahead and index your website again, guys, instead what they're gonna do is they already have a copy of your website in their index guys um, they're going to be able to do a quick file comparison they're going to be able to do some diff calculations um, very very quickly uh, to find out if there's any changes um, from the last index or from the index that they already have in um, their their search index and if there is guys um, then they're going to go ahead and index it again if there isn't then they're going to use the old index or the old cache that they have they don't need to actually go ahead um, and index it again um, and if you actually have a read of the google's patent that i've pointed out to you guys then google makes notes of how they might store signatures only them how they might score store vectors or that how they might only score uh sorry store um parts of a document content and only ever compare them areas and if it's changed then it's going to go ahead and class it as a new change in this diff calculation and then it's going to go ahead and give a new index to it and if it does give a new index because it's found that the website has changed then you could get a freshness boost here as well guys so this is the area that we're talking about that you know what there's changes to the document google's recognized that change they're going ahead they're indexing your page again and they're giving you a freshness factor boost as well guys but again as mentioned google also looks at new pages and associated content the freshness of those new pages 
pages and associated content as well. It looks at the link ratio to time. It looks at your click through rate, your traffic and your engagement. And only after it's done all that guys, will it go ahead and give you a freshness score. Um, so this is very briefly how this works here guys. So let's have a quick look at what information Google hold about as a, about our about our website as a whole, guys. So very briefly, guys. So they have the cached version, and from the cached version, they they know our on-site factors, they know our keywords, they know when it was last updated, they know when we add new content or when our content was added. Uh, they know the site structure, um, what our internal links are like, what our, if we're working with silos, structures, or whatnot, you guys. Um, whatnot, you guys. Sorry. Um, they know the IP that our um, documents hosted on. They know who the owner of that document is. They know the click-through rate from the SERPs, guys. They know if users are clicking our listings and reading more. They know what the engagement and bounce rates bounce rates are like. Are users going to our sites and coming off straight away, or are we providing users with the actual content that they are looking for? And the engagement is high. Um, they know about sites that link to us as well, guys. They know about the kind of sites that are linking to us, what anchor text they're using, when and where the links were created and when they were removed, um, and where whereabouts and positions the links are being added to as well. So whether they're, whether they're being put in the sidebar and the footers or um, are there contextual links or whatnot you. Okay, they know about social signals and the amount of traffic that we get, the brand name searches that our websites get, the domain history and the page load speeds and if we're mobile friendly and co-occurrences and all sorts guys. And Google captures all of this information using various techniques and brings them together to score your site. It then ranks your site accordingly and some of the areas are gonna be more important and they're gonna influence your rankings more than others. But when it comes down to this fresh factor, guys, and the reason, and as Maz mentioned, we don't hear about it so much, guys, but the fresh factor actually affects almost all areas, guys. Um, and this freshness factor, by influencing that and being able to influence that, guys, you have a much better chance of ranking um, and competing um, against other sites. And I'm gonna actually go over an example of um, you know, how a regular a blogger is and how a pro blogger is, the advantages that we have. Um, and we're gonna actually have a look at some live examples after a few slides. <clears throat> Okay, but let's just talk about um, the actual um, uh, information retrieval based on historical data, guys. So in 2003, Google filed this patent, guys. Um, and in this patent, um, I've gone over most of the areas that they actually look at. Um, but g the data that Google considers for freshness is you your site, the query, and the sites linking to you. And these are the actual areas, guys. Now, I'm going to explain them on the next page even better, but I'm just actually bringing them out so you can actually have these uh, for a point of reference. So data relating to an inception date associated with the document. So when was a document first created or when was it updated um, or whatnot, you guys. So data relating to changes to the document. So when was a um, document updated? Uh, when did you add new content to that document? Um, they know all this, guys, and they consider all these areas when looking and giving you a freshness factor. Query analysis data relating to the document. Is your document related to rising terms and hot topics? Okay, data relating to link-based criteria associated with the document. Link-based criteria is like, um, you know, new links versus old links versus lost links uh, versus, you know, this time period that we spoke about and the link ratio to time and whatnot you. They look at the data relating to the anchor text associated with the links to the document. Um, so how are the sites referring to you? Um, how, uh, have the, have the anchors actually changed or whatnot you as well? And we'll be looking more on this when we come over and start looking at private blog networks. Okay, data relating to traffic associated with the document. What was the previous traffic like? How was your ranking before? Um, and how are you ranking now? And how's your traffic now? Um, and data relating to user behavior associated with the document. Are users actually going to your website? Um, are they staying on your website? Are they favoriting your website? Are they bookmarking it? Um, domain related data. So what's the domain like? that the documents actually resides on. Um, domain re relating data into your ranking history, same as like what I mentioned in your traffic area. Uh, user maintained or generated um, data. So oh, again, this is like your, um, maybe your click through rate or bookmarkings and favorites and returned visits. Um, data relating to words, biograms, phrases, or anchor text associated with documents. Okay, data relating to linkage of independent peers. So um, sites that are linking to you, you your document also linking to other sites. Um, data relating to a topic associated with the document. They know about previous documents, topics, and what the topic's about, and if the topic's changed or what not you. Um, 
So let's have a look at these in a little better explanation why. So I've actually created a diagram here, guys. So your page, this is your page on, the, on your site, guys. And when Google looks at your page on your site, it looks at three core areas. It looks at the document itself, it looks at the documents linking to your document and it looks at the search query and user behavior as well. So it looks at the inception date of the document, the ranking history of the document, the topic of the document, has it changed, changes to a page in that document, the traffic related um, areas to that document. And I've put this in the underline, but they also look at your domain um, that the document is on as well. Uh, documents linking to your site guys link based criteria fresh links versus old links versus lost links link ratio to time unrelated links they look at the anchor text changes to your anchor text changes to the document of the anchor they look at query analysis data such as is page associated with rising search terms does the page get clicked in the SERPs uh, user behavior are they user bookmarking are they performing repeat visits adding your site or document as a favorite Okay, and now what I want to do, guys, is show you how this actually affects private blog networks. Now, we all work with private blog networks, and the big question is, um, is are they still going to work? So I want you to ask, and I'm going I'm to be making notes of this in a moment, guys, but I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions first, guys. Um, now, if you have expired domains and if you have private blog networks, then ask yourself these questions, guys. So this is your website here, your, your expired domain that you bought. So has the topic changed to what it was okay does the old anchor text match the current content so let's just say for example you bought a website expired website about fast cars um is the anchor text that's pointing to this website now or this expired domain does it still match the content that's on that website okay has the anchor text actually changed as well so um the anchor text that's pointing to your to that fast car domain guys um sometimes what a lot of people do is actually go ahead and create new anchor text to make it more relevant to the new topic um so has the anchor text changed guys have you done that um, is the ra is the site ranking for discordant queries? So, for example, if the website was ranking for BMW, Mercedes, um, and fast cars before, has it suddenly started to rank for things about weight loss or some totally different um, keywords because the content has changed? Um, so, does it rank for discordant queries, or is the document linking to or receiving links using discordant anchor? So. Um, is your website now that was about fast cars before linking to websites about weight loss and LCD TVs and camcorders using totally discordant anchor text? Um, or is it now getting links from sites using these kind of anchor text? Um, and have the original topics of the previous website disappeared? Now, if the answer is yes, guys, then this may indicate that the document has changed owners and previous document and the previous document indicators such as the score and anchor text, etc., are no longer going to be reliable for Google, um, which means that they could reset your backlink and all of the previous uh, authority that the website has. Um, so how can Google actually address this issue if they did find this, guys? So one way to address this problem is to estimate the date. This is actually Google saying this, guys. So one way to address this problem is to estimate the date that a domain changed its focus. This may be done by determining a date when the text of a document changes significantly or when the text of the anchor text changes significantly, guys. Okay, so if they do see that this has happened, then they're gonna have a look to see when it happened. And from that date, all links and or anchor text prior to that date may be ignored or discounted, guys, which means that your private blog network would have zero authority in the eyes of Google. So anyway, I wanna read some of the parts of the patent. I was gonna take you over to the patent, but it's fairly large. So I've actually taken parts of it and added it to this presentation, guys. But these are the actual words from Google in that patent. Um, and it's from the patent called Information Retrieval Based on Historical Data. And this is why it's so very important to private blog networks, because it's because the patent is all about historical data and we buy private blog networks because of the historical data as well maybe not because of the content but because of the authority of the links that are pointing to them but now google's looking at the actual content and links and anchors and everything as well guys so anyway these are notes from the actual patent so um the method i've actually put the main areas and i've underlined the main areas that i want to speak about guys but 
uh, what he says here is um, this da includes data related to anchor text. So it says wherein the generating a score includes okay determining whether a content of the doc determining whether a content of the document changes such that the content differs from the anchor text associated with one or more links to that document. So here's your private blog network, guys. It was about fast cars, but now you've repositioned it to be about weight loss. Now the anchor text pointing to this document because it was about fast cars, um, is getting links like fast cars, BMWs, Mercedes, and Audis. Now the documents actually changed, guys. So Google can see this. If it changes, then you know what? It's gonna be able to find out, guys. So that if the anchor text links do not match the content, they know about this change, guys. Alternatively, if the content of document changes such that, it, okay, so it's just a repeat there. Let's have a look at these in underlined, guys. So this may occur when a domain expires and a different party purchases the domain. So Google's saying that if this does happen, then this is what it tells them. It was saying to me, it's saying that, you know what? It, this could happen when somebody actually purchases the domain or when the domain's expired, okay? And then it goes on to say, the domain may show up in the search results for queries that are no longer on topic. This is an undesirable result. So it's got these anchor links and, and uh, um, authority links pointing to this about fast cars and BMWs and Mercedes. Um, but now this website is starting to talk about um, weight loss and it might get start to show up in the search results for undesirable for undesirable um search for sorry um for search results that are no longer on topic so they're no longer on topic guys and that's what's going to happen they're going to show in google and this is an undesirable result so one way to address this problem is to estimate the date that a domain changed its focus which i showed you and mentioned on the other um page guys and all links and or anchor text prior to that date may be may be ignored or discounted guys okay so here's another note here guys so Document appears in results for different queries. This is a big problem, guys. The entropy of queries for one or more document may be monitored and used as a basis of scoring. So Google may monitor the document for a certain number of keywords um, to see how it's performing. And then if a particular document appears as a hit for a discordant set of queries, this may, though not necessarily, be considered as a signal that the document is spam. And then suddenly the document appears for different keywords. This may indicate to Google that you know what it's spam so let me just show you this in an example here guys so this is your private blog network guys or your private blog domain it was about fast cars and now you've changed it to weight loss so the previous rankings that this website had was with fast cars BMWs Mercedes and Audi but now it's ranking for unrelated or discordant keywords such as weight loss lose weight burn fat and fast and fast sorry that should be fat loss okay so Google Google tracking document ranking history. If documents ranks for discordant queries, it could indicate spam, guys. Okay, let's have a look at another one here, guys. A sudden growth in the number of apparent, uh, uh, a sudden growth in the number of apparent, apparent, apparently independent peers, incoming or outgoing, with a large number of links to individual documents, may indicate potentially synthetic web graph guys. So here's your private blog network guys or your private domain that you've brought guys. Um, now you've suddenly had um, a, a growth in incoming links or you've had a growth in outgoing links guys. This could indicate to Google um, that you know what it's well, it shows Google that, you know what, it's got a synthetic web graph. It's not normal for this domain to do this. And now Google's going on to say, strengthened if the growth corresponds, corresponds to anchor text that is unusually that is unusually coherent or discordant. And now, guys, you're at, the links that you're actually pointing out to from this domain, okay, let's forget about incoming links, guys, for here. Because the majority of us, if we're going to buy expired domains, we're going to buy the expired domains based on the authority of these links that are pointing to it. So let's just forget about the authority. But what we've done, we've bought this domain now, we've put our content on there, and we're starting to link out to our websites. Now, this linking out to a number of sites, a, a sudden growth, okay, um, is flagging down to Google saying, well, you know what, this is potentially a synthetic web graph. But now Google's saying, and if the actual anchor text is not even related to what it was before, to fast cars and that, then this could definitely indicate that it's been taken over and they could demote the impact of such links. So now you're actually linking out from a website that was about fast cars, and now you're linking out using things like weight loss, LCD TVs, dog training, and child minding, and there's been a sudden growth of these outgoing links, guys, or incoming links. Um, then this is telling Google, well, you know what, um, 
this is spam. Okay, so growth and in incoming or outgoing links using unrelated keywords could indicate spam. Okay, so let's have a look at this one here, guys. So a significant change over time in the set of topics associated with a document may indicate that the document has changed owners and previous document indicators such as score, anchor text, etc., are no longer reliable. OK, and um, a spike in the number of topics could indicate spam as well. OK, so let's have a look at this here, guys. So this is the document before it expired. And this is the document after it's expired and after we've got hold of it. So the topic during the stable period of time. So the topics on this website were about BMW, Mercedes, Audi and fast cars. OK, and a stable period of time might be like, let's say, four months or something um, or three months. Now, a sudden growth in topics. Now we've got the website, guys. Suddenly, within like two days, three days, four four days or whatever, uh, we've gone ahead and doubled the amount of topics on there. And we've added things like tools, vacations, shops, systems, and PCs. This could indicate spam to Google guys. Okay, and then they're going on to say that another, indicate, another indication may include the disappearance of the original topics associated with the document. Okay, so now this is the old site again, guys. This is the new site. The old site had content about BMW, Mercedes, Audis, and fast cars. But now the new website has none of them topics on there and it's got topics totally different now so it's got it, the disappearance there's no none of the old topics on there guys so these could uh, tell google that you know what it's changed owners and it could be it could be an indication of spam guys um and google will reduce the relative score of such documents and all the links and the anchor text um or other data associated with the documents so guys a significant a significant spike in the number of new topics or the disappearance of old topics could indicate spam OK, so the big question here is, guys, are PBNs dead? And the simple answer is no. But you do need to be careful in the way that you work with them, especially if you want them to remain future proof from Google updates. We already know that Google has all of the methods um, to catch all these PBNs um, based on this historical information, data based um, retrieval based on historical information. Um, but we don't know if they're already using them. But what I will say to you guys is, as mentioned, after the caffeine update, it was a total rewrite to Google's code. Um, and after that update, guys, they've just been getting better and better and so much smarter. Um, and, you know, maybe we can discuss some of the other updates that they've had, such as Rank Brain and all other things in, in other videos some other time. Um, but yes, guys, you know what? To remain future proof, you need to change the way that you work with your PBNs. So do we need to work with the way that we work with you? Uh, do we need to change the way that we work with PBNs? And the short answer is yes. But that's only if you work with PBNs without paying attention to anything other than the metrics. Um, so what changes do we need to make? So the first area guys is the key is to reassure google that the expired domain is still related to the previous topics and the anchor text pointing to it we need to reassure them that it's still relevant for the keywords google rank it for you need to be clever in the way that you link out to your sites don't just buy an expired domain because it has great authority and then add some content totally unrelated to the expired site and then link out to your money sites. It's a big no-no, guys. Google can notice the major change in topic relevancy. They will see your content is not related to the anchor text pointing to your site, and they will see your ranking for unrelated terms, which is an undesirable result for Google. They don't want this, guys. If they don't want it, they're not going to let you. They're not going to let us survive out there. OK, and Google could ignore or discount previous links and authority. And this is what they're uh, working towards if they're not already doing it, guys. OK, and I'm going to actually be creating a separate video tutorial showing you how to work and manage PBNs um, in a different video, guys. So keep a look out for that video. But what I want to do is I want to quickly cover Web 2.0 private blog networks. So Web 2.0s are somewhat different, guys. They're in a category of their own. And I'm going to explain this to you by showing you a live example. We can have a look at Tumblr. We can have a look at uh, Facebook as well. But I've, because I work with Tumblr quite a lot, I'm going to have a look at Tumblr. So Tumblr itself, guys, I'm actually on a trending um, explore area here. So these are just trending blogs. So Tumblr itself is a niche within a niche. It's a, it's a social site. People come on here, they share, they like, they reblog, um, and they talk about everything. Maybe just like Facebook, guys. If you have a look at your Facebook profile um, it, or other people's Facebook profiles, they might be talking about what they had for breakfast. Um, you know, maybe them going to the gym. Uh, maybe them, you know, reading what books they're reading, what films they're watching watching and you know who they met and what not you so it's they're all multi-niche even the actual accounts themselves are multi-niche so it's multi-niche niches within niches within niches and even the accounts themselves i mean let's have a look at this one here guys um even this one itself it's going to be probably multi-niche we're going to try and figure out to see what the niche is um and let's see 
exactly what we can figure out, guys. Um, and you'll get a good understanding of why it's very, very different. Okay, so if you have a look at this one here, guys, 17 minutes ago, this one here, 55 minutes ago, 58 minutes ago, um, 10 hours ago, 6 hours ago, just have a look at them, guys. They're all totally, totally different. Um, so this one's talking about, I don't know what, totally different stuff this one's my sunny this is talking about another post of his that's gone viral um this is talking about i don't know what they're talking about duty calls uh it's got videos on here it's got as you can see guys it's totally multi-niche um th th what i'm trying to point out is social sites are totally different when they come to um pbns um and the information based on historical data um in the same way that we could work with social sites and we could work with sites that are parasite sites um how we could work with them differently this works in the same kind of concepts as well guys um so anyway let's get on and let me take you over to the next slide okay so this is like phase two or phase three guys um, of this actual video seeing what google sees on-site examples and i'm going to be showing you a regular blogger versus a pro blogger and i'm going to be talking about these fresh factors they're all coming to force here guys and you're going to see exactly how pro bloggers use this to their advantage without even realizing okay so a typical wordpress blog guys um it posts about one time a week Okay, so you've got your WordPress site here, your homepage or whatever, you've got your categories here and you've got a bunch of posts inside of each category, guys. Now let's have a look at a professional blogger's blog. Now, this is actually a quote from Quora, guys. Um, and it says, on average, a professional blogger would post about three to four posts a day, which is between 1,300 to 1,500 posts a year. Okay, and this is the actual URL from Quora. Now, that's a massive difference to a regular blogger, guys. Now, if you have a look at these on like a bird's eye perspective, I couldn't, I couldn't do it justice, obviously, in this slide, um, but in very basic form, guys. So this is a typical blog versus a pro blogger. So when you're having a look at a typical blog, guys, you've got less content on there. You've got aged and older content on there, unless you're going there and updating them all the time. Um, you've got fewer targeted keywords because each document might be targeting maybe two or three keywords only. Um, and you've got a low internal link count. So you've got a less opportunity or a lower opportunity to link internally within your post as well. But when you compare this to a pro blogger, guys, they've got more content they got new, fresh content. they got them new relationships between them pages to other content and documents as well. they got more targeted keywords because they got more doorway pages and whatnot you in here as well. And they got plenty of internal linking opportunities, guys, whereby they can link internally. If they're creating like three or four posts per day, guys, I'm sure you can, you, you can see the kind of difference that you got, uh, you know, when you're comparing it to one post per week. Okay, so I just want to make notes though, guys, that it's not just about more pages and content. Um, it's also very important to link internally as well. So the importance of internal linking, guys, and I'm going to be showing you a real life example here now. Okay, so this is an example of World Cup, guys. So you've got one website and you've got two and you've got another website. Let's just say, for example, they all had exactly the same amount of pages on there. Okay, now this website here um, is actually linking is not using internal links, but this website here is making use of internal links. Okay, what could happen with this website is multiple articles are on the same topic, guys. They're all talking about the World Cup and posts could be competing against themselves inside of Google. Whereas this website here, guys, it has multiple articles on the same topic with links to a parent post or to a parent article. And these multiple articles then become helper articles to increase the parent posts, which would be like a landing page. And linking internally signifies or signals to Google the importance of a page. So you yourself can tell Google how important a page or a document is on your website by linking to it even more. And it also sends fresher signals by the document relationship and by you putting out new posts and new pages and connecting it to that other post with a link and relating it to that document. Now, guys, let's just see exactly how this happened and what happened with this same very example uh, with the Guardian versus the Mail Online. And this is actually taken, this is an example taken from Search Engine Land. Okay, so with the Guardian, uh, sorry, the Guardian, the World Cup content added, they added the World Cup content to one section only with internal links pointing to the landing page. 
With the mail guys, they fail to link consistently to, land, to the landing page and they fail to tell Google which page is the most important. All the articles published about the World Cup from the mail um, were competing with their own landing page. Okay, with the Guardian, the results that they got was steady and high rankings in the top 10 four months before the World Cup even started. With the mail guys, the landing page didn't even reach higher than page four of Google for the term in the run up to the event. So even when the event was just about to happen, they were still, they couldn't even get to page four guys. That's the power of internal links guys. Now let me show you my own sites guys. Um, now these aren't real examples but they're very, very close to real examples. So I've got, let's just say three websites. I created a website in 2012, I created one in 2013, I created one in 2014. They all have about six, seven, eight pages on them. Now, the problem is guys, they all have stale content, okay? Because they're all so old. But I do have some options to actually make these better and to boost and to give my um, sites and posts a boost in the fresh factor, which will increase my rankings. As mentioned, I've personally tested and trialed this myself. Okay, so I could ask, we already know that fresh content is good or updating content and changing that content is good. And we also know that internal links are good and new pages associated with our other pages are gonna be good as well. So the options that we have is we can frequently post to each one, adding internal links to our main content that we want to rank. We can frequently update posts for a freshness factor. Um, just make sure you're updating a significant amount of the post, a good portion of that post in your main content. Okay, or you could go ahead and get external links and increase click through rate um, and work on offsite factors, guys. Okay, and benefit and leverage the freshness of them fresh links that are pointing to your website, guys. Um, now, to do this, guys, we could either focus on one or two websites because obviously we'd have to, you know, frequently update each post or frequently go out there um, and build freshness. Um, or we could hire writers, guys, to do it for us, especially if we want to have multiple websites. Um, or, guys, you do have another option as well, guys. Um, and that is you could set up your sites in such a way that it's always sending fresh signals to your main content, guys. Now, I've actually got something in place and we've been working on something that allows you to do this guys um, and i'm going to be revealing full details about this in my upcoming email so please join our email list if you're not already on our email list now we've come up with a system guys that allows you to send fresh signals so benefit from the freshness factor for every single one of your websites and every single one of your documents can benefit from this guys um, and we've actually got a number of users that are working with this at the moment and we're all seeing beautiful and excellent results guys so i'm going to be revealing this to you in our next video so please do join our notification list it's something i promise you you're not going to want to miss out on and as mentioned the fresh factor doesn't actually get discussed as much as it should um but maybe that's because this is all from 2003 guys um but what i have personally noticed is after the caffeine update guys everything is really starting to come together for google and they're getting much more faster um, and cleverer um, at introducing and or introducing these um, areas that they added in their patent. Okay, so this is actually the end of the actual presentation, guys. These are some links that I've got for you where I've got some resources, guys. So you've got brigsby.com methods for evaluating freshness, guys. If you can read that, that's a very good post you can read there as well. You've got moz.com blog Google Fresh Factor New. You've got the Google blog themselves here, guys. You've got the Google patent itself here as well. And you've got a link to the Google patent here as well. So anyway, guys, this is Abbas Ravji and I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and I'll see you in the next video where I'll be discussing the actual solution.